afternoon and welcome the families of those who have been outside in that uh, brave in that heat today. Uh, we're glad you're here. It's a, a sad occasion, but a joyous occasion that we get to come and be together. And I'd like to welcome, we have um, Secretary Grimsley. I like to call him General Grimsley, and then they have to remind me that I'm supposed to call him Secretary. And we also have with us Cinder Sin. Uh, she's a co-sponsor of the bill. And the other people we'll introduce later as they come up and speak. But as we've seen over the past year, a year and a half actually, in the midst of a pandemic, the fight against the disease of addiction is more important than ever. While great progress has been made in advocacy and public awareness, much more must be done to help those who suffer from this disease. Earlier this year, I introduced S-571, which the governor will sign today. This is a step in the right direction to put life-saving medica medicine such as naloxone in the hands of those who need it most. But this is just a step in a long road to turning the tide against the opioid epidemic. Community investment and getting to the root cause of addiction to prevent this illness from spreading further is one of the best ways we as a state can deal with this growing problem. I met with many families today who have lost loved ones and have seen the pain and heard the cries for help. I look forward to working with our advocates, survivors, family, and medical professionals to craft new protections for our citizens, to push for greater investment into our communities in the future. And I invite all of you to join me in this fight for better recognition of this need in the State House. Now I'd like to introduce to you Representative Russell Fry, who is also a great advocate for this cause. Uh, as Senator Sheely said, it is a, a great thing, I think, when you can tackle an issue that affects so many South Carolinians and really so many Americans across our country. I'm, I see some folks here who have lost loved ones, and um, when I chaired the House Opioid Abuse Prevention Study Committee, we always started and ended with um, people. You know, we get into the weeds, we get into the policy, we get into data, but hearing from people in long-term recovery, hearing from families is exactly what unites uh, people along ideological lines on this issue. It unites people um, geographically. It unites them in a lot of ways to tackle this. And, and I think the, the General Assembly has done incredibly well over the last couple of years putting into place policies that have proven successful in other states. We have a long way to go, and we are not done yet. Um, it is very important that we continue to focus on this issue, um, and it is you not, not unique to local governments or to states. Um, we need help from our federal government, too. Um, we can do a lot here on treatment, on prevention, on education, uh, but until we, continue, until we see the, the flow of drugs coming across our southern border, stop. We really can't stop this issue. And so we need our federal partners to really step up to the plate on a whole host of issues from funding to border security to everything else. But this bill is important. Um, and South Carolina can be proud to lead uh, when it comes to naloxone. We have expanded access to naloxone um, years ago, and we're continuing to do that today. And we know, if we follow the data from other, the other 10 states that have done this, we know that providing access to naloxone in a medicine cabinet will absolutely save lives. We know that people sometimes don't suffer from opioid use uh, disorder, um, that they accidentally take too much for the first time. And having access to that drug in their medicine cabinets will save lives, and that's important. And critically important, too, about this bill is the ability of a doctor to discuss this with their patient. We know that, that opioids are a tool, that they are useful in a lot of ways, but it is often difficult in a clinical setting to discuss the long-term effects of opioids on you, and this bill provides that dialogue between a doctor and a patient and making sure that people are aware of the, the dangers of prescription drug abuse. And so I'm very excited today to stand with Senator Sheely. She was a uh, rock star in the Senate. I'm, I'm excited to be part of 
uh, this bill signing with the governor who has stood with this General Assembly time and time again to pass meaningful legislation that impacts the lives of so many South Carolinians. And with that, I'll also turn it over to another rock star, uh, the director of our uh, uh, Deodos, um, which has done so much in the fight um, for the, uh, against this epidemic. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Shealy, and thank you, Representative Fry. Along with Senator Sen, you all have really given us so much leadership in the General Assembly on substance use issues, and your focus on solutions, and your focus on supporting our most vulnerable populations really does make our state stronger. This law, which will have our prescribers talk to patients about the risks of overdose and offer them a prescription for a potentially life-saving medication, is more important now than ever before. You know, at events like this, we typically come and, and share a lot of data and talk about the numbers that have occurred. Um, and I'm not going to do that right now because really the reality is, is that we're talking about our neighbors, we're talking about our friends, and in some cases we're talking about our own family members who are at risk of overdose because of the medications that they're taking or because they have addiction or a substance use issue, which is a treatable disease. As the opioid crisis evolves, we all have a part to play, and who better than a trusted healthcare professional to talk about the risks of medications or to have a brief intervention with a patient who has a substance use issue, making sure that they know that there is a life-saving medication to help keep them breathing should an overdose occur. This law invites, like Representative Fry said, critical conversations about a patient's health status. And to me, that's just simple and true, compassionate health care. Uh, so now it's, it's my pleasure to turn it over to our governor, Henry McMaster. But I do want to thank you publicly, Governor, um, for prioritizing overdose prevention. I, I want to thank you for pushing us to collaborate and coordinate across sectors to get ahead on substance use issues, and we've been doing that since your executive order in 2017, forming the state's opioid emergency response team. And I want to thank you for always recognizing the many folks in recovery and the families who are recovering. Thank you for all that you do for us, Governor. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Well, this thing we're doing today makes a difference because the opioids are, are a scourge and uh, thanks to all of those here who have kept this very important issue alive. And we learn more as we go. Uh, we've got a lot of rock stars, General, in, not only in the government, but among our people. And one thing that we do is we, we take care of each other. And that's one thing that makes us very strong in our state. Our, our loyalty and love of each other is something that's recognized by people all over the world. But this opioid crisis is exactly that. And thanks to leadership that you see here before you and others, uh, we're making progress. I wish we had, a, had an antidote like this, like naloxin, for a lot of other things that hit us. But we do have it for this. And this, this law makes it available, makes it amply available and for free to those who, who need it. And we know from recent events that the supply of opioids is greater and greater. We know that the, op that the deaths and overdoses from opioids are getting greater and greater. We'll have more numbers about the last 12 months that are go I think will be shocking. And so it is, it is timely that we in South Carolina are, are making this, this great step. We know that in the, at our southern border, it was mentioned, it used to be that you bought your way across by, with money. But now the smugglers, the coyotes, the cartels are having people bring fentanyl across the border. And that's, that's the price for admission to the United States. So a lot of people want to come here for a whole lot of reasons. So everywhere we look, we are covered with opportunities for overdose and opportunities for abuse, many of them totally innocent, as was mentioned earlier. But the addiction that accompanies it, whether it begins in an innocent way or otherwise, is the same. And it is an addiction by nature, an addiction is hard to break. 
And that's why it is so important that we in our state are taking this step to see to it that when that moment comes, that there's something that can save those people, that it has been made available to them. So thanks to all of those who've participated in this, including you here today. And uh, with that, if there are any questions, we will then sign the bill. Are there any questions? So right now, uh, the numbers are preliminary, and DHEC has not finalized the final mortality data for drug-related overdoses for 2020. But the CDC has predicted about 1,730 drug-related overdoses. That's inclusive of opioids and non-opioids. Uh, so far, they're predicting about 64% of those deaths are related to uh, synthetic opioids or, or fentanyl-type uh, substances. Uh, so, I, Governor, just asked a great question uh, about the increase over time, and I think it's important to note when we see this data that from 2019 to 2020, um, I'm sorry, 2018 to 2019, we did see almost a leveling off of our overdose deaths. Uh, we had an increase that year of only 3%. Uh, down from the 10% the years before that, and it was well below the national average. I think what we're going to see for 2020 is an, an increase of nearly 50% for our state, and that's among many states who have, you know, all states have seen an increase, but we have seen a sharp increase. I think it'll have a major impact, but the one that can answer that question better is Sarah Gold. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. You know, the impact on families is great. Uh, we've got a lot of families in the room right now, and um, we hear stories every day from families who have had access to this medication, knowing that someone in their home was at risk of overdose. They've been able to administer this life-saving medication to keep their loved one breathing until the ambulance can arrive, and that's really what this medication does. Uh, it keeps someone breathing so that we can usher them to treatment and services, and that changes life. That's life-saving. Uh, so, so this is about not only preventing death, but about saving lives. More questions? In that case, let's sign.